I start your report here on what you can expect in March, I just want to bring a little announcement, and that is now there's available four different reports that you can choose from. It's the lover's report, which can see how you're affecting each other astrologically, right? A sinister chart. There is a calendar. There is a transit chart, which comes up with all the peak dates uh, pertaining to your own personal um, chart, of course. And then there is the, the year ahead, starting from the month that you order it. So these are very exciting. It's a collaboration that I'm having here now with this company and I know him as an astrologer which has been out there more than 40 years. He's super good. I ordered his reports back in 93, <laughs> right? So it's something that I know that you can become very excited about as well. But we're going to dive in for your month now for March, but watch to the end because I'll scroll through those reports so that you can see it. You can check it out for yourself and see what it is maybe that you can expect, right? Hello Pisces, happy March. We're looking at what is coming in for you and let's just dive right in and take a quick look at the most important. But listen, you are going to have a fabulous month. Happy birthday, by the way, it is your birthday month. Um, so of course you're having a solar return. That in and of itself is very, very energetic. But what I'm feeling is more so you have Venus, and when Venus crosses the ascendance and into your first house, this is when you are extremely radiant. Radiant with love, joy, beauty, happiness, artsy energy, renewing yourself, maybe a new hairstyle or whatever you're doing, right? Maybe a new wardrobe, but you're feeling great. So yes, it is springtime. It is a wonderful time of the year for all of you Pisceans. Uh, but we have not just Venus and the Sun, we also have the new moon in this area alongside with Neptune, which is your ruler. So we have the new moon in Pisces, in the sign of Pisces, conjuncting Neptune, triple whammy in your first house. What does that mean? That means that this is a month for you to envision, to dream, dream big, you know, and it's very creative, very artsy. You know, and you're bringing it out to the world one way or the other, okay? Because the ascendance, that's where the energy is going. And I can see how you're loving it because of Venus being there supporting you, having joy and fun with it, and also the sun. Um, so expect that there's going to be some extra focus on you as you do this. Whatever it is for you, it is going to be uh, what you're going to be bringing out there. And on the new moon, which is the 13th, of course, that's the time when we put our uh, intentions out there. So what should that be for this month, Pisces? Well, hey, with Neptune, I would say, bring it on, bring it more. I want more of this, whatever it is now that's going out into the world, whatever it is you're, you're projecting out there, this is good. I want more of it. That should be your mantra right? And of course, Venus rules love and uh, passion. It also rules money and beauty and art, all of those things. So if you're into anything artistic, you might say, well, I want more of that to, to now be produced and go out and received, right? Um, so put all of that into your intention, especially around the 13th, because it has the power to be with you for a whole year until you get the new moon in this area next year so i love that for you you're feeling great about it then we have the second thing coming up here for you and that is saturn and jupiter with uh mercury in the 12th house now what does that mean the 12th house is everything that is internalized it's our inner spiritual sanctuary right so mercury has been retrograde in this area throughout that of february you might have felt more of a need to kind of pull back a little bit. And if so, that was all good because that's really recharging your batteries and you, you've been very busy there in uh, January coming into February. So this is a good time to kind of put your feet up, relax a little bit and kind of like tune into what is in your consciousness down below. Subconsciously, 
you know, this is dream time when we are awake. And then, of course, pay attention to your nocturnal dreams. That is definitely going to be super active. And I think you might already be feeling that, Pisces. Um, this is the area of the chart that you rule. And having both Jupiter and Saturn here, and Saturn is something, an energy, the mastery of, the responsibility that we carry, you might just feel a heightened sense of responsibility for your dreams. Meaning, what does that mean? <laughs> taking responsibility of taking your dreams seriously, for one. Uh, knowing that they hold value. A lot of these dreams, your creative energies and where they're going, you've worked on this for years and years and years. That whole Saturnian uh, transit before it's in this place. And now it's laying in the, the back side of your mind saying, I really want to surface. I want you to harness the energy of all those tools, skills, knacks, and know-hows, everything I've accumulated upon my journey for so many years. How can I bring this up into an imagination of creation and creativity? How can I bring it up? So you're mastering and harnessing that imagination. Jupiter is overactive right now in your subconsciousness and dream state, right? Really expanding it to a point where it could be hard for many of you Pisceans to even fall asleep because you may be as dead tired as a dog when you go to bed and as soon as you put your head on your pillow, it's like here it goes. The subconsciousness goes and there is that just it's like a movie theater, right? You're seeing all these things that you can uh, harness, things that new things that you can create, things that you've created in the past that's been laying there in your files might be coming up again and where you're thinking, oh God, I need to do this, I need to do that. Saturn being on you, holding your nose to the grindstone, saying, don't give up on this, follow up, follow up, follow through. <laughs> But it's it's joyful. It's a journey. You know this uh, area of your chart so well because you rule the 12th house. So I'm thinking that that is all good. Um, of course, you're going to feel this super strong when we come closer to the full moon this month. It's coming in from your 8th house there on the 28th to your 12th house. And it will lead up to and cross these planets before it passes. So royalties, commissions, monies, deals, something creatively bound uh, might surface around that full moon, which you could harvest. Um, maybe there could be a raise or a different type of payout. I'd like to see that take place for you, Pisces. Um, and then, of course, you know, let's talk a little bit about uh, presentations because you have Mars and Uranus right now going in your third house of how you're presenting what you're presenting. Um, third house is all about communication. It's online communication too because of Uranus, which rules the internet. So some of you might be, I don't know, maybe opening up blogs or uh, it could be writing. It could be so many different ways. Maybe you're bringing music out there. Maybe some of you are even into online trading. And I say that only because um, Uranus is in Taurus, which rules money, and of course, we're having all these different coins, bitcoins, and ethereums, and so forth. And some of you might just even find interest into that and uh, dive into that area. And that can definitely behoove you. And I want you to pay attention to that very last few days of February coming into that first week of March it can be very lucrative maybe uh whoever you're getting in touch with whoever you're communicating with pisces at that time i feel could be somebody who could collaborate with you work with you partner with you uh want to do things online with you because it's between the third house and the 11th house so it's communication with groups or organizations and it's powerful why because mars is dynamite Uranus is nuclear. Both of them put together its passionate energy and 
a lot of physical energy. You might drain your battery by having fun doing it because whatever it is you're doing, you're loving it. And whoever it is you're doing it with, they're loving what you're doing with them, <laughs> right? So I feel collaboration. Keep an eye open for it here through February. Even though Mercury is still retrograde in February, but it can be bringing you people and places from the past or things that you researched or worked with in the past can bring it back to you here and now, and then you can benefit from it. Okay, take it from here and then run with it. Um, I like those dynamic energies because, well, it, it can keep you working 18 hours and you're not tired. The energy is so high. Uh, just don't forget to eat, you know, and uh, drink your liquids. <laughs> right don't dehydrate while you're doing it uh but it's a run it's definitely a run and you're this is taking you straight into your birth month here now of march and i think you're gonna have a beautiful beautiful solar return uh due to that and where the planets are right now so you know you want to get your transits go to get those reports go to my website get the printout it will be sent to your email within the next four hours is what I'm promising, you know, and uh, it'll give you all the dates of when to when to step forward, when to step back, and, and so forth. And for those of you wanting to look at the lover's report, how you influence your partner, but how you're influenced by your partner, what he or she's bringing to the table, uh, merging your energies together in a synastry, awesome report. There's four reports there, but check them out. They're all good. And I'll see you in April. Bye now. Thank you for watching this month's forecast. Make sure to smash that button.